page. Okay. After three, three, two, one. Okay. So welcome to the inaugural launch of the African Film Festival Atlanta. The African Film Festival Atlanta is a signature event of the African Film and Arts Foundation, a nonprofit media arts organization whose mission is to magnify and celebrate the visions, voices, lives, and stories of people from Africa and the African diaspora. This year, our theme is celebrating Nigerian stories. Our live discussion today is with the director of The Ghost and the House of Truth, Akiyama Motosho, moderated by actress and director, Terry J. Vaughan, who just told me she got her DNA results. And guess where she's from? Just <laughs> guess. He's Nigerian! <laughs> I was pretty excited to find that out. But so I always knew it, though. I name. always knew it. I did, too. So I, I think I see your name, but I'm going to give you a name. So that I will email to you. Okay. Anyway, going back to the discussion, um, the Ghost of the House of Truth stars Susan Wokoma, Kate Henshaw, Fabian Adioye Lojade, Tokwe Tadala, Sheung Ajayi, um, Kemi Lala Akindoju, amongst others. So I'm just going to give you a brief intro of um, who we have today. Akin Motosha is a writer, actor, and director born in Nigeria, and he grew up in the university town of Ife, where he's, he found his first love, writing. In 1992, his family moved to South Africa after his father accepted a lectureship at the University of the Western Cape. He made his directorial debut with a feature film, God is African. In 2004, Omotosha directed the television series, Jacob's Cross on African Magic, Mnet, and SABC between 2007 and 2013. In 2010, he began working on Tell Me Something, Tell Me Sweet Something, which was influenced by Theodore Witcher's Love Jones. The film earned him a Best Director Award at the 2016 African Magic Viewers' Choice Awards in Lagos. In 2016, his film, Baya, premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival, took critical praise, and continued to make his rounds around the festival circuit, and earned him the African Movie Academy Award for Best Director before landing at Ava DuVernay's array. So that's Akin. Welcome, Akin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. <laughs> Our moderator, Terry J. Vaughan, now an honorary Nigerian, has <laughs> over 20. <laughs> That's how you my start blood. Right? In my blood. It's not yeah. an honorarium. It just is. <laughs> okay. Okay. Who is a Nigerian, has <laughs> over 20 years of experience in the entertainment industry. She ex exploded on the scene with her lovable and memorable character, Lovita. Alize Jenkins on the Stephen Harvey Show. She went on to star on several series such as All of Us, Soul Food, Tyler Perry's Meet the Browns, Greenleaf, um, Girlfriends, which I just watched recently, and most recently, Insecure. Terry is the co owner of the Atlanta based film and television production company, Nina Holiday Entertainment. She has produced and directed several projects for Viacom, TV One, BET. And Mama Vista, making Terry a triple threat in the industry. Terry has, uh, uh, has been honored with three NWACP Image Awards for her work, work on the Steve Harvey Show and is the founder of Take Wind Foundation, based in the San Francisco Bay Area, mentoring young women growing up, mm -hmm. at risk, growing up in risk communities. So that's Terry. Welcome to the African Film Festival Atlanta. I'm now going to hand over to Terry. I'm going to come off screen, and Terry will be talking to Akin about his film. And then towards the end, I'll come back with the Q&A. Akin, do you want to say something? I just want to say about Jacob's Cross. I acted in Jacob's Cross. And I actually need to get my act together and sort that out, because every time they say you directed Jacob's Cross, I'm oh. like, yeah, I just acted in it. <laughs> oh. But that's oh. not your film. Okay. I need to get my act together. I just need to credit <laughs> the people who actually the people who actually wrote and directed it, which is a company called Bomb. And uh, so I acted in Jacob's Cross. 
Um, I didn't direct. Oh, I can't. Right? Every time I see it, I keep saying, too. I gotta change that. So, yeah, that's what's up now. Yeah, that's what I found on. Oh, I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. My bad. My bad. My bad. I need to change. I don't know. Listen, I, I didn't put it out there. So, <laughs> yeah, it so it's there. not your bad. You didn't, yeah, they, they can write anything about you. I know, right? But I, it's just, right. anyway, I'm acknowledging that I acted in it um, and a, 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 a team created that show, which was, I was very excited to be part of that show. So, yeah. Okay. All right. So that, that, that's a good clean up. So now, Terry, I hand over to you and I'll be back yeah. to you at the end. So thank yeah. you, Moji. Thank you. Um, I came. Yeah. So you're a triple threat. You're a triple threat. Act two. Yeah. <laughs> do you, so do you still pursue acting at all or are you over it? Uh, I'm not over it. I, I, I would love, it all depends, you know, it all depends yep. on, on time, availability, interest. Okay. Right. Um, but, uh, but I always find it quite humbling to, to, to go back to acting because you, you know, sometimes, and I don't know if you find this as well, as a director, you, you can forget certain things. Yeah. And then when you, when you go back to acting, you're like, oh man, actually, you know, so whenever the opportunity and if people will have me, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm open. It, it, it's, it's all about timing. Right. Completely understood. Mm, so mm, don't mm. you, do you feel as because you have a, a acting background, um, it makes you a better director? I like to think so. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. You know, I think that as you know, as an act, as, 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 a, as, as, as someone who acts as well, you just go, I don't want to be spoken to like that, or I don't want to, you know what exactly. I mean? So there, there's certain things that you just know yep. how other directors talk to you that you go, well, I wouldn't talk to an actor That's that right. way, you know? And I went to, you know, studying at drama school, and mm -hmm. I was fortunate to go to the University of Cape Town drama school. And I'll mm -hmm. say studying at drama school really helped just in terms of understanding the discipline and the craft and the respect, immense respect for actors and right. that craft. So I know some directors get scared to talk to actors and I've always maintained, like I've never been scared to talk to actors because, so I feel like that's, that's not a hurdle I had to overcome. The technical, understanding the technical aspects of director, directing, I had to overcome and understand what the camera does. But mm -hmm. talking to the actors, I'm very comfortable with and really, really enjoy it because right. um, there's, a, there's a kinship that I feel with, with, with you know the members of our craft people are just which is a huge beautiful. part of being a great director is being able to communicate to your talent and i think that yes in this industry a lot of times if you're not like a huge star or something it's like actors are almost at the bottom of, of the totem pole it's like you know say your line and walk over there type of attitude yeah, yeah exactly and, but we know that there's so much that actors go into for their craft and you know what we do to our instrument and our mind and our spirits to prepare for a, a role we approach them completely differently and i think that that gives us a a you know a jump start on yes yes directing. yes and do you enjoy that do you enjoy that aspect as well like as a director talking to the I love you know, it <laughs> I love it, and, you know, and, and I taught, um, I taught an acting class, um, and I still do every once in a while. So I love, I love actors. So yes. becoming a director was, um, was, I guess it was always meant to be, even though I never knew I would, but this is so about you, Akeem, this is so about you and your movie, which I saw, it was amazing. Thank you so it was much. So, so good. The, the ghost and the house of truth. Yes. Um, it was so many things about it that I loved and made it a, a beautiful, beautiful film. Um, and I have like a bunch of questions, but I could just talk to you like forever, even without this list of questions. Well, um, let me also just say it's an honor to be talking to you. So I'm a big fan as well. Oh, so wow. just also, let me just acknowledge, and now that we know you're also uh, citizenship of Nigeria. Right, right. <laughs> we cousins, what? But, but, but thank you, uh, yeah, and thank you for all your work and just, you know, also, it's a real honor to be, to be talking thank to you. Thank you, thank you. So, The Ghost in the House of Truth. Um, the first thing that stuck out to me was how beautiful you captured um, the, the scenery and the culture. And so, 
you know, as a filmmaker, I'm like, how much money did he have to shoot this? Because it looks big. It's like, you know, that, that um, at the beginning of the movie, that market shot, when you yes, go yes, to the yes. market. So I was wondering, like, are, were those, were they a part of the movie or were this is just real life there in the marketplace there and you guys just shot in there or were they hired actors and you had that kind of budget? <laughs> We definitely did not have that kind of budget. <laughs> um, you know, it, it, it's an ethos of like, no matter what we have, you're always shooting for the stars. You know, you always yep. wanna, you always wanna shoot more than you know what you, what you actually have. And we 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 didn't, we definitely didn't have a, a, a lot of money. But I also think that, you know, it not that it doesn't matter, but it's that it's that it's that you want to you want to be able to show the scope and the depth. And so a lot of that. What you're talking about is us really coming on the scene and taking those images because we really wanted a sense to give people mm -hmm. this idea of this community and so on and a lot of sort of pre 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 production mm -hmm. you know so we shot the film in 2018 but from 2016 i've got to give credit to my wonderful dp cabello tate he and i went to lagos and we already started sort of scouting those communities mm -hmm. um, especially the community of Marco Co, went in there uh, two years in advance and tried to make sure we, you know, we don't, you know how film crews can be, you can just arrive and so on. We, we right. definitely didn't want that. We wanted to be part of the community because we understood that for this to work, it, it would have to feel, you know, it, you, you really wanted it to feel organic. Mm -hmm. And so, so to your point, that was a lot of the thinking ahead of time of how do we, how do we, how can we be part of this society telling this fictional story and not really interrupt their day-to-day -day, mm -hmm. uh, existence. And so a lot of that work started two years before we shot and credit to you know, executive producer Ego Boyo and her team in Lagos, because Cabello and I live in Johannesburg, but you know, able to keep, keep the idea of we're coming to film, you know, it's, and I know it's taken a long time, but we are coming. And, and all those things are really important so that you, you build community, so that people right. are more welcoming and you're, you're more respectful to the, to the place you are, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So long way to answer the question, but it, 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 was, so, that so of, started, it was that. So you guys started building a relationship with the community there before you ever started shooting? And yeah, yeah. Kind of, did you talk to them and tell them that, this is, that you guys were shooting a movie here? And... Um, yeah, so, so that they we, were prepared. Yeah, we had a great um, <clears throat> so we had a great team. You know, um, uh, our locations manager, a gentleman called Imole. So he, what we did was we 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 kept it vague. We were like, we're going to shoot a film, so we would love as much as possible to, right. you know, be part of again, be part of the community, not be too intrusive. Mm -hmm. And so you, you know, every time I went to Lagos, I would go you know, walk around, spend time just to be able to, again, just tr try to osmose everything in this community. Mm -hmm. And then with the team, you know, as we got closer, you now start saying, okay, it's a movie. Who can we use? You know, the little girl on the boat, she's from the community. Oh my God. Without that was a, yeah, so you know, amazing. <laughs> without, you know, so some of, a lot of the people, some of the people scattered in the movie that you wouldn't uh -huh. know, but you know, they're from the community. Um, and it was, it was just really, you know, we stayed, we all stayed in a hotel like five or 10 minutes away from, you know, so we were, we were really, you know, in, we're inside, we're inside, you know, we yeah. were, were really inside there. I, I can, I can feel that. I can feel that. And I feel, um, I think when you're a filmmaker and you have a, a love and respect for the story that you're telling and the people that it includes is like, I can feel you did that. Yes. And are you able to do that? I know we're talking about this one particular project, but are you, are you able to do that as a director most times on your projects or, or sometimes it is, you know, you got to dig deeper to find, um, just the connection of the place, not so much the story, but the place of where you're going. You know, as much as possible, I try to do exactly that. I mean, I've been quite fortunate that the films at least have been quite um, sort of location, you know what I mean? So if you take, you know, I did a romantic comedy called Tell Me Sweet Something, which was set in a very particular area in Johannesburg called Mabo Neng. So a lot of the times 
firstly, I hang out in Melbourne then, so that was, you know, so mm -hmm. I'm there. Secondly, like when we, me and my co-writer, when we were writing it, we would go and write there, you know what I mean? So we spend a lot of time writing these scenes in the, in the space. I, I, mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm, I'm really, the so one thing I love about directing and storytelling is the idea of creating this, you know, you, you can really try and create this world and, 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 um, and you know, in Via, which is based on, you know, the lives of um, four gentlemen who had come to Johannesburg and lived on the street. You know, they took us to all the places they went to uh, yeah. uh, and gave us all those textures. So I really enjoy that process. So, so as much as possible, I like to, I like to us most because I feel like, yeah, you, I don't know. I just, I just, I just enjoy this idea of, you're not just coming in mm -hmm. and imposing, but you're part of, and you allow the spaces in the community to also inform what happens in what you're doing. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. That, that speaks volumes about you. It's like you are very, um, I don't know, you're full of love. And I can, I can tell that from the way that you go about telling your stories. Um, okay, so there was one thing that I noticed in the movie as far as um, there was, I don't know if it was a particular lens or something, but there were a lot of shots where the middle was mm -hmm. in focus and then around the edges were soft. Yes. What was your um, reason for doing that? And what did you use to do that? So we used, uh, so thank you, thank you for noticing that because, uh, so I, I would say three things and hopefully it is three things. One was, so it's the shift in the, the, so the shift and tilt lens. I'm sure there's another, you know, far more, it's the, this, but it's the shift and tilt lens, which allows you to. See, I'm learning from you too. I'm actually <laughs> going to write that down. <laughs> shift and tilt lens. Listen, I'm sure there's a, there's a, there's probably a fancier way to say it, but I, I do that the shift and tilt. Uh -huh. And what it, what, so there was, the one was an aesthetic reason. It just looks, it's really like how it looks. Mm -hmm. And then two, I felt like Lagos is such a, you know, the story is so, the story is quite um, dark and, 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 you know, very emotional. Uh, so I felt like just as the audience is watching it also, you know, like let it not be so hard hitting, let there be these ah. moments in the frame that are calm, you know what I mean? So it's, it's not, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, you're not, you know, so that was, this, that was the second, so the shift and tilt, so the one was this sort of, Lagos is a very, is a very intense city, beautiful city, noise. How do you, how do you make a noisy city quiet on screen? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. so try, so with that, it sort of softens and then the blow of also what's going on in the story. And then secondly, the other thing was that because of what I was saying, you know, a lot of times people just look in the camera, you know what I mean? Like, because, you know, people are looking in the camera. And I had spoken to Cabello about, we need the smallest possible camera to be able to shoot this film so that nobody, again, we're not bringing in all these lights and right. trucks and whatever. Right. So we right. can just be shooting and life can continue and everybody can do what, what they do. What kind of camera but, did you guys use? So now I'm going to really mess up because, because <laughs> I, the, 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 I knew it. I don't know it anymore. It was, it was okay. the Sony I something. I understand. Mm -hmm. it, it was the Sony something, yep. but it was very tiny and it allowed Cabello mm -hmm. and it allowed us to just, Amazing. you know, I didn't need, I mean, I, I used to look at the monitor on the camera, so I'd follow him, you know, so it was, it was really to try and again, be part of the community. And you and shot so, one camera? One camera, yeah. Um, and so, and so, but sometimes people look into the lens. So you're, as you're trying to capture this life, somebody right. might be staring into the lens. Right. And because you've already set up the style of softening, we could also technically in post so soften anybody who was ah. looking. And nobody would be like, why is suddenly, ah. you know what I mean? So, so that's why the tilt and shift. Because, mm. because you know, in, 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 you know, if you, we, don't, we didn't have the money to clear, like I always joke, that sequence with the boats, Mm -hmm. That's not a, okay, cut, let's reset. No, that's, that moment you see in the film is the real life of that thing happening. There's no take two of that, you know? So because we didn't have that luxury of let's reset, you kind of had to take it as it came, which I like. Mm -hmm. But it also meant you have to deal with the fact that sometimes somebody might be walking, as you know, and then everybody just stop and look. Right. It'll right. allow us to, and, it, and you know, like when K2 plays the police officer, walks through and is following him the people are looking at her that's people looking at looking at i mean kate's a massive star so they're looking at kate as the officer but for the story it works because it works, that guy's yeah. a member of the community they're looking at so it, it was just 
those two years of thinking about how to make the film mm -hmm. formed this kind of lens style, uh, which, I, which, which I also think gives beautiful picture as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you know what, something you just said about um, because the story was so um, intense and could have been in, in so heavy, um, you know, and, and so a part of using that softness was to kind of like soft, almost like kind of soften the, the blow of what we're experiencing. Yes, yes. Because a lot of times when it's, when it's the heavy stories like this one, um, especially as a mother, as a parent, it's too much for me. Too much. Yeah, no, for sure. It's too much. And I'm all, and I, and it, it's aching to sit through it and watch it. But and I did not know that I didn't, I didn't, I'm so happy you explained that because for some reason I was still drawn in to this mm. story and I never felt like I wanted, I was, it was so much that I wanted time out, gotta stop, yeah, can't yeah, breathe, yeah. I can't take mm -hmm. it. And I mm -hmm. think it's because of the way you shot it, of what you just said. And of course, because of the, the beautiful work that the actors put in as well, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it made me, it made me not want to, you know, I didn't get so affected by this mom losing a daughter, which would be devastating for me and hard for me to see. Of course. And the other thing that I that I appreciated that you did as a filmmaker is you didn't show us yeah, yeah, yeah. that baby. Um, and you just said what happened to the baby and, you know, and then had the cover there and all that. I appreciated that so much because even in the state that we're in and with all the brutality and all the stuff and all the filming of all this stuff, I just feel like it's too traumatic and it's, it's yeah. too heavy to watch and see. Tell me the story and let me take the story. I don't mm -hmm. have to embed it in my mind. So yeah, I appreciated that choice as well. Thank that was you. Huge. Yeah, it was, it was, it's really important. I'm glad you said what you said because also, as you say, the violence that we consume, unfortunately, yeah. So as the filmmaker, and I don't know how if you, and I know you say it's about me, but I'm also interested as, you know, it's because I wrestle with that all the time, is how much am I contributing to the trauma? Mm. And how much am I healing the trauma? Right. And so right. that, that push and pull is always, um, especially when you're dealing with the subject matter, it's, it's, I, yeah. I, I, I agonize over it a lot because yeah. I understand that, or at least I live, you know, we live in a world where, as you say, we're, those were brutalized by these. As a filmmaker, be, as somebody who is behind the lens, bringing stories, how do you, um, yeah, how do you just make sure that you're not, you're not a part of the problem? Right. Um, and I don't necessarily have the answer. I don't have the answer, but I'm saying but I wrestle do. with that all the time. But you are the answer. And the fact that you even think about it as an artist, that you think about it, you think about what you're feeding to us, you think about what you're giving our spirits to, and our visual minds to consume. The fact that you're thinking about it is what I meant earlier when I said, I can tell you're a filmmaker. You're, you're a man that's full of love. You, you, you and you operate from that space, even as an artist, and I'm I'm sure you do it in your personal life as well. But as an artist, you operate from that space, and that's and I appreciate that so much. I really do, because there's been like some amazing um, movies that have gotten you know Oscars and all this stuff, and it was in and, and it was movies that I could barely watch. I could barely watch because it was too heavy. It was too yes, yes, yes. And I, you know, I, I want to learn and know the stories, but I don't want to see some stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, and, and and I'm and I'm glad we're talking about it because it, it is that thing of you watch. I remember sometimes you can watch some films that you know what they're trying to do is heal, but unfortunately, right. it's not. It's not doing yeah. you know, in some cases, and so you walk out of the cinema, you walk out, and you just traumatized, like you're yes. reaching. And yes. so, and so, as a filmmaker, it, it is something that I, I agonize over a lot. If I'm when it's this, you know, I, I mean, I agonize over everything, but it's more. Right. It's that what am I? Because as an actor, similarly, I mean, I, I'm. You know, I think actors, you can play anything kaleidoscope yeah. the world is open to you but i think and there you're part of a process but if you make the decision and say hey i want to be a storyteller then it's like well why are you filming why are you telling stories right. and what stories are you telling and how are you bringing them to the people yeah because that's that's really important that's really important you know to me i love that
Love, love, love. Um, so um, the actress, the one that played the cop. Yes, Kate Henshaw. Kate. She's amazing and beautiful. Was she pregnant for real? She wasn't pregnant for real. <laughs> so what was the choice of, why the choice of making her pregnant? So. Um, I loved it. Yeah, but I wanted to yeah no, absolutely. No, no, no. So I, I, I can't take credit for it, but um, Kate's amazing and, uh, and, and so happy to have her on the film. And so the story came, I, I came across the script in 2000 and, in 2007. And we only made it in 2018. So I had the script for a very long time. And, um, and um, you know, in the original script written by Brian Tilly and Roger Smith, the police officer was a man. So when, 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 when we, it was under a different stable, it was under a different stable and that fell apart. But I really liked the story. And I said to Brian and Roger, do you mind if I try and make this? You know, I didn't know it would take 11 years, but I was like, do you mind if I hold on to it? Because I've always liked the story. But the first thing I did was change the police officer to a woman. I was like, I just feel like it's just, you know, I just, it, again, it's the energy and, you know, what, yeah. so, but then many moons later um, with my manager, Andrew Coles, we, I said to him, look, I've got this project and I just feel it needs something. And he introduced me to a lady called Tracy Whitaker. And Tracy read the script. And the first thing Tracy said was the police officer should be pregnant. And I was like, wow. that's a brilliant idea. Wow. Was Tracy's idea. Brilliant. Shout out to Tracy. It's shout uh, out to Tracy. Whitaker. She did a few other, she did a few other things that, that, that just, they just lifted the script from where mm -hmm. Brian and Roger had it and where I had it in my sort of adaptation. And she just took it to that level, which you, which you watch now. And, and that, that intervention I think was key. Um, that was Tracy's idea. Was it written to, um, was it written by Americans? Or, um, Tracy Whitaker, like those names sound. Well, Tracy's American, uh, Brian and Roger are South African. South African, got yeah, it. Yeah. So Tracy's American, but, but, but um, she brought that texture. And I think when she brought that texture, I, I, I was like, yeah, then now we've got, it felt like, again, hopefully emotionally, this idea of a lady whose kid, whose child is, missing mm -hmm. this person who's about to bring life into the world and her job is to find missing children yeah. and you know the, the, the image when she's against the wall with all the kids and you know she's just trying to make her way yeah and and and, and you know yeah so i love that choice i i do it, it made it more um uh just impactful just knowing that this woman she's get, giving birth soon and yeah these are women that are losing their can't losing their kids and she's has to be the one to sort through this yes yes so as and, a and still keeping on and still and keeping still on. keeping on and still so my whole time when i'm thinking i'm watching right and i'm like oh my god i just hope that she you know is still breathing and still <laughs> because she has to keep calm she has to keep her yes, peace. yes, yes. she's got to keep her baby Absolutely. healthy so i'm thinking about all these things but she still mm -hmm. has to do her job right, exactly. and then especially when you had her running through the town i was like oh my god <laughs> Stop running. You can't run. Let the other ones run. And she was going at it. I was like, oh, God. So, yeah, so that was really good. That, yeah, that was a great yeah. choice. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, how, so how did the project come to you? So originally, the, um, there was an idea which they wanted to bring a whole bunch of filmmakers together, pair them with writers. It was the, one of the broadcasters in South Africa. And... So that was it. So it was, we were all sort of paired with, you know, I was paired with Brian and Roger, but that project never happened. So as, as you know, things start, you know, they, yeah. they, but, but I always loved that story. Like that story from the moment I read it mm -hmm. then in 2007, I was like, wow, I'd love to make this one day. And at that time we thought we were going to make it then didn't happen. And I just, and I, and you know, Brian, and Roger, they were like, well, you can, yeah, you can have it, <laughs> you know, let's and see what happens. And just okay. through the years, I'd always meditate on it. And then producer Ego Boyo, who is, um, uh, 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 you know, producer from Nigeria, she and I met to make another film, which never got made. But then we, we made, we made this experimental short experimental film called A Hotel Called Memory. And after we made A Hotel Called Memory, Ego said, really enjoyed our collaboration. And she said, is there anything you think we could do next? And I said, well, I've got this uh, 
you know, and she read it and she was like, I'll produce. And so she, you know, she, she, you know, the reason we're talking here is because, you know, Ego, Ego, you know, was able to back the movie and another financier, a gentleman called Nana Sao were able to put the money together. So that's how, that's how it happened. I mean, it was, it was what that. Was the, what was the budget for it? So, you know what we always say that you can say, we put it together with the smell of an oil rag and prayer. <laughs> Got it. Got it was it. A, it was it was a modest it was a modest budget, but but everybody gave. Wait, like uh, like it. I'm so grateful to that whole crew and cast. Yeah, it was a very modest budget. It. Would be the mm -hmm. easiest way to, without without making you fall into like fall back on your chair. No, I got it. Completely. It was a modest budget. Um. So so the one. The other thing that is beautiful about the story is how it comes full circle with the woman who, who did lose her daughter yeah. and her job that she had, and now it, it came full circle. Yeah. Um, what, what was your, um, what's your hope that people get, learn? Like, what's the gift that you're giving people with this, with this movie? What do you want them to get? So, so like we were saying, you know, I always think these things are complicated. And so what I, what I resonate is what you mentioned as well, is that awful, that awful thing of what if it, not awful, but you know, like what if it happened to me? So what right. is my, how, how do we define empathy? So in other words, how mm -hmm. can we be empathetic and at the same time understand what would I do, which none of us hopefully never, you know what I mean? What happens if it's me? And then if it's me, are my responses still the same? So can I be calm and tell somebody who's lost somebody to get over it? Do you know what I mean? And I, so for me, it's a wrestle. So for me, the film, I don't really have a resolution other than it's, a, it's, it's in the gray area for me. And that's what I liked about it, that, that I, don't, I don't know where I stand. Right. <laughs> you know, I, no I, I, I can appreciate what she does and I can also appreciate Unfortunately, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's such a, it's a, it's a thing to wrestle with. Yeah. And I think that's, 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 you know, that's like, you know, for me, that's, yeah. that's what we always wrestle with. It's like, yes. can if I be empathetic? How, how is my empathy? How, can I be empathetic when it's not me? Do I, do, do all my instincts only kick in when it's me? Mm -hmm. And I think that, that uncomfortable gray area was what I always liked about the story. I love uh, that. And, 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 and it's that, is that can I, oh, can I equally be empathetic when it's, you know, when it's not, so when it's not me, can I be empathetic mm -hmm. or does my empathy only kick in when it's me? Right. Right. Um, what did you, is there a memorable moment? Oh, right. <laughs> I mean, the whole thing was, it was, I mean, we didn't have a lot of time, modest budget. I think we shot for like 21 days. Okay. Uh, to do it but i would say the boat the boat the boat yeah. sequence is memorable before a number of things um well there were, again there were three things one was like i said to you spending time in the community studying those boats the canoes so understanding that those boats will always crash like they always meet each other like that mm -hmm. so understanding that we just had to be ready and what you see in the film happens it's like better. it's not you know what i mean it's not like okay now boat one boat yeah. two Right. So, so spending enough time in the community, going on the water and seeing, okay, so these boats are going to think. So in the script, we've got to have that. And we just have to pray when the drone is up and when we're shooting, it happens. And it happened twice. Because obviously you have the top shot and you got the, so, but it's not the same. You know what I mean? Like, it's not the same. It's like, you know, right. the power, the beauty of editing. But so I was really that, that's just that idea of like really yeah. being in touch with the community and you just know like, these boats are gonna hit, and um, and then Wait, two. Was it always planned? I'm sorry, going back to that moment. Yeah. Did you plan for, to have the little girl paddle the boat, or was, yeah. or were you thinking that Kate was gonna row the boat? So we knew, we knew Kate, we knew Kate. No, because I, what I wanted was this idea of like this guy. This guy has been a menace in society. So, so if you notice again communities know who the menace you know they know who the menace is sometimes they don't right. act on it because whatever people don't feel right. they have the power or the you know the authority right. 
But when they see the authority chasing the menace, they're like, yo, you yeah, know, so when she's that. looking yeah. for the thing, the guy goes. I know, know I that. remember. I was like, oh, that's good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because, because the community knows, like, that person's a problem. Yeah. Um, and um, what I was trying to do, what we were trying to do with, with, with um, the casting director as well, Kemi Lala, who's one of the producers and who plays the cousin in the, in the film, was that for me, that little girl knows that that guy's a menace. So what has he done to her family? What has he done to her right. sisters or her cousins? So right. it's not like I'm just helping. It's like we, we all want to get him. Over yeah. Person. So, so that's him. what the little girl was about, right? And, um, and um, Kate, so what was funny was that Kate had never been on a canoe. So that's just like her first time. So she was going in a joking mode. She was saying, I can if I fall off this canoe into the water, I'm not doing your movie again. And I said, Kate, if you fall off, no one's doing the movie. <laughs> I love that, was a, that was a special, in, in, in many moments, I mean, there are many moments in that film, but, but the boats, okay. that, was a, that, was a, that was a special day and a special moment. Yeah, I can see that. Um, so how can people see this movie now? So it's, um, and I, again, I need to get my act together. It's um, it's <laughs> I need to get my act together. I'm the worst salesperson for this movie. <laughs> You're an um, artist. We are artists do not sell. Artists do not sell themselves. We're the worst. We're the worst. Yeah, we can't I, sell I, ourselves. It, it's awful. Look, we continue to play festivals such as Moji Sola reaching out to me saying, "Yo, can we screen the film?" And so, thank you, Moji Sola. As she miraculously appears back on our screen. Yeah, um, I just I have one more question before you pop. Yeah. So, 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 so to your point, we're going to be making some news. Uh, it's going to be available in North America and some other territories on an online streaming platform yeah. very soon. Uh, yeah. And by very soon, listen, I, it might even be up now. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> uh, but and I'll, I'll, I'll put it on, on, my, on my, social, my social and then people can hopefully go stream it, go watch it. Um, uh, so yeah. it will be available in North America. If you're on the continent, it's already available on what we have Showmax here, which you just released. So you, you get a chance to see it on the continent, but outside of, outside of the continent, this online platform, OAFF, um, has, has a reach in North America and, uh, and, uh, and, and Europe and so on. So people get a chance to watch it. So Moji's gonna make sure that we, you give everyone your um, platforms and all that so people can follow and see what you're doing. Um, but my last question I would like to ask you is, um, what are your thoughts for the future of cinema in Nigeria? Oh, very exciting. I mean, very exciting. I mean, it's been from the jump, you know, 1988, one video cassette sparked off a revolution. So. I've always been excited. And I think we can see now, you know, you get more opportunity. You don't have to wait 10 years to watch a film or you can, mm -hmm. you know, the, again, the opportunities are, are open to see the work of, of a lot of Nigerian filmmakers. And, yeah. I, and I'm really happy. I'm really happy about that. So I've always been excited about the industry. That industry has always inspired me because they created, they created a culture out of nothing. You know, they, out of a military dictatorship, cinema shut down. Somebody had a brilliant idea, like, ah, empty cassettes, what can we do? And that's 1988, and here we are, 2020, and you can see what that industry has done in the world. So it continues to inspire me. Um, yeah. Every time I'm in Nigeria, the passion, the people, they really, really make, make me excited and, and just like inspiring, just inspiring, really. Well, you are inspiring and you, you are And so are you. Today. So are you. David, Akeem, let me finish giving you praise. Be quiet for a second. <laughs> Continue to pave the way for, for all those coming behind you. I think you are a, an amazing example of a great filmmaker, a, a great human being. And uh, it's been an honor to talk with you today. Thank you so much. And yes. Thank you. Thank you. You've helped my street cred, just so you know. <laughs> just so you know. Just so you know. I saw my followers go up a little. I was like, what? Here we go. Yo, what's your street cred, Akin? What's your street I've, name? I've got no street cred. I've got zero street cred. <laughs> well, they should get to know you. You're pretty amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, so much. just a few questions from the audience. Um, 
So any upcoming projects um, for both of you, actually? So let's start with Terry. Um, yeah, actually, um, I directed a movie earlier this year um, that is, it's a Christmas movie. It's a Christmas comedy movie starring Wendy Raquel Robinson and Keisha Sharp, and it's super funny. She's um, funny, Wendy. I feel like, yeah. I, you know, you feel like this one is like, this is the best one that I've done so far. Like, that's what I felt right now. Um, and it's airing on BET um, in December. I don't know the air date yet, but if you follow me, of course, I'll be promoting and pumping it up. But please watch it. Um, these two beautiful Black women gave amazing performances, funny, heartwarming, touching, um, and it's, it's a really great story, and I was, it was an honor to direct them. I love them. They're my sisters. And um, I'm in Connecticut now directing something for next year. All right. Haki? Um, so I just recently, so uh, I'm in post on a film I shot last year. So uh, a, a romantic drama, something called Courting a Natty. So we're in the final stages of, you know, you're you know, trying to lock picture and all of that. Um, and I just recently started working on the, uh, the, the, the Yanis Adetokumbo biopic for Disney Plus, um, The Greek Freak. Oh, nice. nice. Okay, another question from the audience. This is from, hey Gladys, <laughs> that my question. Why the cho choice of the film title, The Ghost and the House of, of Truth? I've always liked these sort of majestic titles, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, look, how deep, it, actually. Huh? <laughs> I said, how deep? <laughs> well, look, I mean, listen, you know, because truth be told, the, the joke was like, there's no ghost and there's... <laughs> where, as people are coming expecting a horror film. Where are the ghosts? Where are the ghosts? Look, I think, I think it has more to do with my feelings in terms of society and healing, and Nigeria in particular, which you could take to any, you know, was that Nigeria is sometimes haunted mm. by our past. Mm. And this sort of, I mean, you saw what has happened in the last couple of weeks, especially yeah. with, the, with, the, with the protest and how these things, uh, you know, it's been suppressed for so long, but yeah. it comes up. And so for me, the ghosts in that move, the idea is like, they're ghosts and nobody's tackling them. And you need this, you know, borrowing from the Cantemba House of Truth. You need this moment of like proper reconciliation, which is what, which is what Bola's character is doing, right? Trying to reconcile the, the, the injustices of the past. Mm. And you know what I mean? So that's what the title alludes to. This idea of there's a need for a, a reckoning and a reconciliation of our history before we can move forward. Mm. Okay. Um... Other question is okay. So co-productions um, between um, Africans of the continent and in the diaspora. What do you both think about that? Do you think it's something um, we should aim for? Because there doesn't seem to be a lot of that going on. What are your thoughts around that? I'll well, start with you, Terry. No, no, that that is one of the things that is so dear to my heart, which is why I, as soon as you asked me if I wanted to be a part of this, I was like, absolutely. You kept saying that. Um, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. <laughs> because I feel like because of history and, and what has been done in the past, there's been a purposeful disconnect, a purposeful um, unfolding of our unity. Mm -hmm. And we have to find a way to fix it. And that is the only way I feel like we are going to um, excel as, as people. It's like, we are not separate. We are together. We are the same, no matter how much they've tried to embed in us that we are different or, you know. And so for me, that's, that's a part of my mission and my journey in this art form is to work together, bring us together. We're so much more powerful and stronger together than we are apart. And when we're together, they cannot, they can't disrupt us. When we're together, there's no stopping us. Yeah, exactly. Ain't no stopping us. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I think what happens is that there, you know, there are a lot of the projects happen. So what I always try to tell people is like the projects happen. What 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 doesn't happen is the amplification of the projects. Mm. So mm. so you don't, unfortunately, and that's why I like sort of the idea of these streaming platforms coming up yeah. because hopefully 
what they do is they bring these collaborations yeah. to the to the to the fore. So, for yeah. example, you know, you've got the African Movie Academy Awards, which has a diasporic award because that's their attempt to also, you know, what I mean, your festival and all these things. So, how do we amplify? And when I say amplify, I mean for the community. In other words, let our people know mm. content is available. Yeah, and actually, these possibilities are available to us. Yeah. And the more we can do those, the better. But I, I agree with Terry. Like that's that's the that's that's what it's about. Is to is to continually bring everything together because we're richer and better for it. And there's so many stories to tell. Yeah, um, yeah. That we have. yeah. And there there's so much we can learn from it. It's like yeah. you know, yeah. I grew up in the United States. There's teachings in my mind that I have had students growing up, you have your own experience growing up on the continent and with bringing those type of people together. Yeah. There's, there's so much like education that can happen. There's so much fun that can happen. There's so much we can laugh at. Like, exactly. you know, exactly. it, there's just so much. And as artists, we're supposed to, we're supposed to teach. We're supposed to yeah. heal. We're supposed to, yeah. and that's, that's a part of it. We got to tell those stories that do those things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me see. Any more questions? Uh, uh, uh. Moji, your hair is cute. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. I like that. As a Cameroonian woman I go to. Um, <laughs> that does it. Thank you. Um, so, Terry, I'm going to have to think of a name for you. Um, what's come to me so far is Olayinka. <laughs> Olayinka. Yes, yes. How do you spell it? O L A Y I N K A. And I'm going to get you the full meaning. Okay. okay. Um, so, we, a lot of Yoruba names are actually abbreviations, so they're longer. So, Olayinka is really a phrase, it's really Olayimika which means something around wealth coming into your, you're surrounded by wealth and good oh, things. Oh, I received that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So that's what's come to me. I think, yeah, because I've been looking at you, I'm like, oh, she looks like a Yinka. So it's Yinka for short. Yinka. Yinka. See how you feel about that. That's no, we can help. Fantastic help about it. it. <laughs> Sorry? I said I feel fantastic about it. <laughs> welcome to Nigeria, my sister. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Embrace you. Thank you. I hope that you have an amazing weekend with your um with the rest of the festival, Moji. I think this yes. is so beautiful and wonderful that you're doing it. And thank you for including me. Thank you for and accepting. I can't thank you so much. It was so thank you, good Terry. to speak with you and to get in your brain a little bit. Yeah, Thank before, you so much. Before you, before you go, can you give us your last like inspiring words for upcoming filmmakers? Start with you, um, Akin. Well, I always encourage everybody to think of it as a marathon. <laughs> and if you think about it as a marathon, and if you understand what a marathon runner has to go through, I feel like you can enjoy the process a lot more. Yeah. And and, and to embrace it as a marathon, it's a it's a long haul. So that's my, that's what I always try to encourage people. Like, don't be discouraged. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't go well, just think of the marathon runner. They start preparing a year beforehand. And, and when you think about that kind of preparation, you understand what you need in terms of our industry. And we all know that, you know, there, there, there are always going to be people who are going to tell you no. There are always going to be people who are going to tell you there's somebody better than you. But if you just understand that it's a marathon and hone your craft, yeah, you'll be fine. Um, I think uh, to know that it's a craft, um, so study the craft and within there's several ways to study the craft, um, and know why you're doing it. Like, why, why do you want to make films? Why do you want to tell stories? What's, what's the purpose? Um, that will get you through all the no's, um, because it is an industry and I've been in this industry for a very, very <laughs> <laughs> and most of the time the answers is no the answer is no most of the time sad to mm -hmm. say but it's real 
Um, so you have to know why you're in it. Otherwise, you will stop. And if you stop, then it's just not your purpose, not your mission. But if it is, know why you're doing it because you're gonna need to lean into that um, to get past those no's. Uh, you have a voice, you have stories to tell, you have people to serve through your craft. If you look at it that way, you know, you'll stay inspired and keep going. Okay, well, I guess the audience is enjoying this. There's another question from Winnie. And the question is for Akin is, what was the process in actor, actresses' choices that were made for this movie? In addition, what's the best way to present one's talent? In other words, she wants to audition for you. Yes. How they got the job and she did it. And what does she need to do? <laughs> Tell her. Oops. You're right. Um, yeah, well, look, I, YouTube platforms, you can, you know, you can be your own, you can be your own person, right? On, 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 uh, on, on, on these platforms. But in terms of the Ghost and House of Truth, Kate is somebody who I've always admired wanted to work with and this project felt an ego felt the same way uh and so you know the, kate uh kate's just amazing and susan is also somebody who seen her work and again yeah. you know yeah we, you know we speak about people who you know susan a nigerian but lives in london and part of the diaspora so how do you you know how do you bring these talents together and and um we sent susan susan the script and she read it and she was like, I'm down. And so, yeah, it's, it's also my own admiration of very talented people and wanting to invite people to the, to the party. And, and, and hopefully I'm grateful that these two great actresses lent their talents to bring the story that needed the sort of emotional and maturity that they bring to these two parts. Yeah, I was hoping Kate could come on, but she said she's on set today. Um, and Susan, I just saw her in something on Netflix, that haunting film about refugees that made it, um, what, what's the film? I can't remember what the film is called, but she was really great in that. But um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you remember the name of the film? I don't remember the name of the film, but- Yeah, but you know the one I'm talking about? They're both great, yeah. I mean, they're, 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 they're powerhouses, man. They're, yeah, they're, they're yeah. Powerhouses. So um, I'm glad we made this happen. Um, Thank you. You know, with this uh, COVID-19, we just, you know, had to make changes. Everything was like, even when, when, the whole idea of the festival was to do something, you know, show films from all across Africa. But then when NSAS happened, we thought, okay, what could we do to contribute? So we just thought, let's celebrate Nigeria. Um, because the NSAS thing just, I think it left all of us devastated. I, I think I was down for like, two, I didn't even know what to do. You know, no, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so this was our way of contributing to just uplifting. You yeah. know, what we're going on in Nigeria now is very, it's, um, it's, it's, it's very similar to what's going on in America with Black Lives Matter. It's actually no different. It's just no it's, different. Um, yeah. Nigeria is black on black. Here, yeah, it's, you know, it's the, it's the division in race. So um, I think the more we start, you know, doing things together, um, the more we, because we need to also understand each other. You know, there, there is this, um, I don't want to call it animosity between Africans and African Americans, but there is some kind of divide. And I think with platforms like this, where we can come together, share our stories, like you said, Terry, learn from each other through these stories, I think, you know, the, beyond the sky is the limit. So I'm glad we were able to do this. Thank you, Terry for coming. My um, pleasure. For accepting as well. Terry, tell people how they can reach you um, on social media. You can be on social media. It's just like my name is spelled Terry J. Vaughn, T-E-R-R-I-J-B-A-U-G-H-N on all the platforms. A.K.A. Olayinka. Searching for Olayinka, not finding um, so I'm not re I'm not on it like I should be, but I'm mainly on Instagram, so it's just my name, Aki Um I'm on Facebook. Yeah, so Instagram, I like Instagram because obviously it's visual stuff. But I mean, on to yeah, so okay. I'll leave it at Instagram. <laughs> okay. So the Ghost of the House of Truth is actually currently screening, so you can go to our website, AfricanFilmFestATL.com, 
If you're a filmmaker, I suggest that you watch it. If you're an aspiring filmmaker, I suggest that you watch it. If you love cinema, I suggest that you watch it. It's really good. Yeah. And I want to wish you good luck with your shoot. Thank you. broad. I know that feeling when you're about to go. So all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Um, Everybody that tuned in, go to our website, AfricanFilmFestATL.com. The festival goes on to Sunday. We have two Q&As tomorrow as well uh, with filmmakers from Nigeria. So stay tuned. And everybody stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. All All right.